What's going down guys? Brother Stevani is here, Command Center Wargaming. I hope you like the new intro. Also, this is our new premiere tutorial. It's basically how to do an ultramarine in iridescent blue. Okay, now the idea behind this tutorial was basically um, to have a look at ultramarine blue and without going metallic, seeing if we could get something a little bit more neon, a little bit more poppy, um, you know, sort of pop up to your to the camera, pop up to your eyes um, than the normal ultramarines blue while keeping that sort of dark sort of blue ultramarine purpley tone. And um, I think it's good. I think it looks good. And, um, you know, you could probably see a turntable of it right here going around after I edit this out. But without further ado, here's a tutorial, brothers. Remember to like, share the video around. And remember, if this video reaches 3,000 views within two months, I will be giving this video away. So share the video, everybody. Um, you know, let people see it. And uh, if I could get 3,000 views, I will post it to one of our subscribers. Now, you must be a subscriber to be in the draw for this giveaway. Um, and what you do, if you want to be in the draw for this giveaway, comment down below. By the lighting and the tempest, Emperor deliver us. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoy the tutorial and we got many more to come. Commence Center Wargaming, Steve out. All right, everybody. Fantastic. So the first thing we're going to have to do is go through and prime our Primaris model. Now, because the coat of this is going to be quite sort of incandescent, uh, not quite metallic, but it will be quite sharp uh, and glowy, we want to put on a black undercoat. Okay, now for this black undercoat, I'm going to be using MIG One Shot Primer Black. Now, the reason I use MIG One Shot Primer Black is because it's very, very uh, thin, but also consistent and it sticks to the model really nicely. I've had some uh, troubled experiences with Vallejo Negro Black Primers and um, also, look, the Games Workshop stuff, I just find it to be way too inconsistent, to be honest. Uh, so that's what we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and um, start to undercoat the model. And what I'll do is I'll just go through and getting my airbrush, I'll just go through, get, get some water. I just got some water in here. Um, and I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to just clean the airbrush out a little bit, back foot feed it just a little bit. All right, just so I know that uh, I'm going to get a good flow there. Now, what I like to do is I always like to go through and just make sure I keep a little bit of water there in the airbrush, just so that the, um, you know, I know that the undercoat is going to go through. Make sure you give the undercoat a good shake, which is something that I forgot to do. Uh, so I'm going to do that now. And basically, I'm going to just give it a good shake. Okay, very important. Guys, the undercoat is super, super important. Heaps of people, they sort of neglect it. Um, this is why I go to great lengths to have my undercoat, you know, I pick my paint for my undercoat, you know, I don't just use Games Workshop stuff, um, and the reason is because it's just so important, guys, um, like, it's really going to dictate the base of the model, uh, the actual uh, finish of the model, the texture of the model. Now, you can see what I'm doing here, I'm just going through ever so slightly, and I'm just lightly airbrushing this on. You can do this with a brush if you want. Um, however, it will be a little bit hard to use this MIG one shot with a brush. This MIG one shot is too thin for a brush, so you'll need an airbrush for it. Okay, but um, like I said, guys, any black undercoat is fine. You can even use like a dark blue or a metallic blue, um, something like that. But like I said, I, I like to use MIG one shot because as you can see, as I'll show you in a second, when the paint comes on, uh, it leaves the, the maximum amount of detail on the model. And you go through and, you know, you spend all this time, uh, you know, going through and, and undercoating this model, spending all this time on it. So you don't want to lose any detail, you know. I'm just going on under the model here. Okay. Looks like I might be a little bit out. There we go. All right. Just give it a bit of a tap. Okay. All right. Coming in from underneath it. All right. And that way, you know, if we do have a flow inconsistency, it's going to come in from underneath the model as well. All right. So it's not going to really matter too much, you know. So we're just going to come out from about 20 centimeters away, just do little circular motions with the airbrush and just go and just go through and, uh, and undercoat that, get in there. All right. Make sure all the model's done, but don't put it on too thick. 
The good thing is with this with this MIG one shot is that even if you do get it on there a little bit thick, um, it's really going to shrink wrap around the model. It does a fantastic job of just shrink wrapping around the model. Um, one of my favorite uh, paints, MIG, and um, absolutely fantastic undercoat. Okay, so the white one is even better, believe it or not. The white one is even better. And I would be using white, it's just that, um, yeah, we, we want to sort of get it black for that metallic finish, okay? And you can see here, like it's, you know, it's looking pretty good. There's a few areas I've missed, like underneath here. So I might just go in, just come from underneath there um, and spray up in there. All right, so come from underneath and spray up in there like that. Now, you can keep all the parts to the model separate if you want. Um, I used to do that. Uh, I kind of sort of worked out though that, you know, what ended up happening was I just ended up painting all this stuff that, you know, you didn't see and like just took more time. And, you know, I suppose if I was into competition painting and stuff like that, guys, um, then I would sort of maybe do it. But, um, you know, I'm not really about that. Uh, I like painting my armies really well, but, you know, to sort of like above tabletop standard, but I also like to play with them. So there we go. You can see that that's the uh, undercoated Primara series looking pretty cool. And don't worry if there's tiny little bits there showing through. It's better to have a little bit of show through on your undercoat than to drown out the detail of the model, I find. All right, so there we go. It's looking fantastic. All right, and he will dry and um, let him dry. This undercoat dries pretty quick. Give it about maybe you know three, four minutes. Watch some YouTube. You know, you can flick through some of the other tutorials on the channel if you want. Um, as you're going, I've got heaps of other tutorials on there. You know, subscribe if you can. That'd be awesome. Um, you know, we've got undercoating tutorials, you know, all sorts of painting assembly tutorials on there. All right, so yeah, so we've done the undercoat and now we're ready for the next step. So guys, once you've done that and you've got the black undercoat done um, and ready to go, what we're going to do, we're just going to come in here with some Stormhost Silver or Vallejo Silver or whatever it is, the brightest silver that you've got. We're just going to come down the model from a 45 degree angle, all right, and just add some uh, shininess to him, all right, so it's going to be cool. We just want to get that onto the model, all right, we do want to put a fair bit on there. All right, sparkle him up a fair bit. Okay. Like so. That's fantastic. So here we go. We can see there, he's all up. He's all nice and shiny. All right, ready to go. Ready to go for the next step, which is to add the electric blue. All right, for this, we're going to be using uh, auto colors. And um, we are going to be using Auto Air Colors Iridescent Electric Blue. Okay, it's really cool paint. All right, fantastic. So just make sure you just give your, your uh, silver layer a little while dry before you go through and, um, and uh, to complete the next step here. But what we're going to do is just going to go through now. And it's very important that we just do this next step very, very, very slowly. All right, we really just want to build our way um, up here because it has to be done in very slow increments. Just going to add a little bit of water into the cup. This stuff can be quite uh, quite thick, um, but we need thick. But in order to not get it too purple, uh, we need to make sure that we put thin layers on. Now, you could do this with a brush. You could do this with an airbrush, okay? Whatever it is you want to do. Um, but what's fantastic about this blue, guys, it's ultramarine, but it's a little bit different. And it's got just a little bit of a slight, uh, you know, sort of purple haze to it. Right, so just going through, just mixing this up into the cup, which is cool. All right. And uh, I'm just going to go for it. So just going to start just spraying this on. Okay. Just short patrol bursts up the model. All right, so starting from the bottom, going up. All right, now I'm using an airbrush with a 0.03 nozzle, just so you know, all right, because it is quite a thick paint. All right, and already I can start to see that lovely blue coming out. 
So this blue is basically, you know, if you don't like metallics, but you want something that's a little bit different, you know, to the normal sort of ultramarine scheme, you know. And you can see it's, uh, it's very, very nice and uh, it's starting to really come up there now. Right, but look, see, it's still ultramarine blue. All right, now it's just very important. I'm just gonna build up very, very slowly here. All right, very, very slowly. Spray about 20, 30 centimeters away. All right, we just wanna make sure that we're not gonna go through and, um, and put it on too thick. We don't want it too dark, All right? We want it so that the metal is still showing through. So we really gotta just be careful here. Underneath, you could go like heaps dark, it doesn't matter. All right, but on top, we wanna make sure that we can just see it through. All right, fantastic. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna let that sit there now. And that's the first layer. I'm gonna leave it to dry. It's probably gonna take about three layers for me to go through and get this guy looking, you know, where I want him. All right, and you'll see as we start building this up, you'll see he's gonna to start to get like a really, really nice purple sort of uh, sort of hue to him, which is cool. All right, we might do a we might do a Blood Angels one as well, because uh, I know Zombie Dad was saying he wanted more Blood Angels stuff. So, yeah, I just thought this would be a good tutorial because, um, you know, it's it, it's close to the normal scheme, but it's not too outlandish. So if you guys, you know, if you do like the normal Ultramarine scheme, uh, it's not too far fetched. So I'm gonna go in now. We're gonna put in uh, another layer of this, just water down. I'm watering it down. The first layer I, I watered down around about, I'd say it was like a 4060. This one is like a 2080. The paint does have to be sort of a little bit thick uh, to get that purple hue to come across. Uh, but like I said, we just wanna make sure we don't make it too thick, all right? Because it will get too dark. So just very thin layers. Remember, always test your airbrush out on your outside first, right? And here we go. So building up there. Building up to a really, really nice sort of blue. Okay. You see here, I'll just, just slow bursts, striking motions up the model. Okay. All right, he's looking really cool. And just gonna, I'm just gonna just go in here, just underneath. I used to, I used to model these, you know, separately, guys. So when I painted, um, I could model them all sort of like separately. But then I kind of found that, you know. It was like, oh, uh, you know, all that ended up happening was, is I just went through and started painting stuff that uh, that, I, that you don't see. I'm just coming up underneath the model, and that that blue, just gonna get in here just a little bit, very carefully. You could brush this on as well, just you know, just watch out, make sure you know you do it very thin. Um, I'm going to switch to brush when we do the trims and the rest of the details. That's the easy part. All right, and there we go. So we see we've got that blue going on down there. The iridescent blue. All right, and I'm not sure if you can see the purple hue coming up on the camera, um, but it's definitely there. It's very subtle though. That's the beautiful thing about it. It's very, very subtle. It, it sticks true to the Ultramarine scheme, the Games Workshop one. Um, but it's just slightly different, so, you know, you can make your army look unique. Which is what I really, really love about it, you know, so... It's cool. Alright, so I'll let that dry. What I might do, I just might use my trusty hair dryer for a bit. Alright, just dry it up for a little bit. I'm really liking the shade of that blue. But I think we can just go for one more layer very, very, very carefully. But guys, just so you know, it's very important, don't go too dark with this. If you put it on too thick, it's gonna look way too dark. You're gonna, it's gonna look like purple. You don't want that. And you'll notice as it dries, 
it'll start to get more purpley as well. So I can actually start to see it sort of start to purple it up. I don't know if you could just see it there on the on that leg there. You can see it's got this very, very slight purple color shift, um, which I love. Everybody knows Locke loves his color shifts. I love the color shifts. You see here, the thicker you put it on, the more apparent that color shift becomes, uh, like under the belt there. Right, but we don't want it. We don't want it too thick because it gets too dark. But what I am going to do, I'm going to go through and I'm just going to add a few more, a little bit of darkness in a few more areas. I'm just going to go with straight paint this time. Right, this airbrush, this paint's thick enough that it's going to allow me a lot of control here. Right, and I'm going to go just like areas down here near the foot, bottom of the foot. Right, where I can afford the paint to be a little bit more sort of like built up, darker. Then I'm going to go up under here, underneath the model, the back of the pauldron. This is kind of like my shading technique, back of this pauldron, um, and then under this arm. Right, so this looking really, really freaking nice now, guys. Have a look at that. Have a look at that. Look at that. Right, so that little flicker, that little sort of purpley, metallic y sort of colour we're getting. Alright. But we want to leave like areas like the like you know the top of the the uh, the knees and that. We want to leave them sort of more blue so we have a bit of colour contrast. Now I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna do the uh, the pauldrons. Just slowly build that up. And then the top of the head there so we get a shine there top of these little things and just come back in from the bottom and I'm thinking that's starting to look really good um, let's go in a little bit more here a little bit closer let's really mark in that that blue Under here would be quite dark as well. We get away putting some here. Let's have a look. So yeah, it's looking really nice now. Maybe a little bit more up the front. You know, and then a little bit more here on the greaves. Yeah, it's looking really nice. Probably the front of the greaves here are uh, pauldrons as well. There we go. Top here a little bit. So you just gotta you just gotta do it as it comes, guys, you know. Alright, and uh, and that now is starting to look really cool. It's all about those thin layers, guys. And you know what, we're gonna go up the top a bit as well because you will be seeing that I think this sort of pauldron here will go on now as we be careful right here it's starting to go a bit too purple so I'm going to stop right there it's right on that point where it looks good like it's not purple it's still ultramarine but it's not um, you know it's not it's not too purple right so you can see it there at, you know in my opinion um, it's looking really, really good. Let's see if I can bring this light back over. Fold down. There we go. Alright, it's really nice blue. Really fantastic ultramarine blue. Just to remember as well, guys, it's, uh, it's very, um, it's dark in here because it's overcast day as well. Alright, but we'll take some pictures later. And yeah, so, I'm, I'm happy with that. I think it's looking good. All right, fantastic. So we do have to let that dry for a little while, guys. And uh, once that's done, we'll go on to the next step, which will be to do the trims, just outline the guns and things like that. All right, guys. So for the next step, we're just going to switch over to the brush now. I'm just going to use my good old Psycho. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm just going to go in here and we're just going to start marking out all the areas that will be silver 
all of the areas that'll be black, right? So I'm gonna start off here uh, with some good old lead belcher. All right, Games Workshop lead belcher. Okay, and, um, and we're gonna go through and just mark like these areas out here. So I'm just gonna come in here. I'm gonna mark out the uh, in between the pauldrons here. All right. Just in between this area here. In between there as well. Okay, if we make mistakes, we can always come over and just paint that, that back on. Um, but it just marks it out for us, so it should be should be fine though. So come in here. And just push that through, just, just getting those areas sort of under the legs. Now, I have different vari variations of how to do this, guys. Um, but for this tutorial, uh, I'm just going to... I'm just going to paint under the, at the, uh, the, the joint sockets, just uh, lead belcher, and then I'm just going to go over them with a wash. Uh, sometimes I do them grey, sometimes I do them, you know, uh, like all sorts of colours, but yeah, so just get underneath in there, and you probably can't even see so let's continue the tutorial now that I've stopped using the airbrush I can actually uh, zoom the miniature in a little bit zoom the camera in a little bit just so I can actually see what I'm painting a little bit better so just get in there and you guys you guys can see me paint as well then all right yeah so just going through just attacking the um, the joints between the armor just so I could show you that right there. Geez, that blue's looking nice, guys. I tell ya. I'm loving that blue. And yeah, it's just unfortunate you can't see the purple hue on the camera. I don't think, but uh, we'll see. Maybe I just can't see it on the footage. So we'll just go through and then, um, and then we're just gonna get under the jetpack here. All right, so in there like that. All right, let's paint under here. This is lead belcher. All right, we'll just do in these little grooves right here. All right, and then just these ones as well. And like I said, guys, we could just come in here with a brush later. Don't worry too much if it, you know, if it stuffs up. If you stuff something up, um, these aren't to me clears. You can correct your mistakes really easily with these. Um, we'll leave the eyes for now because I'll come back in there later with Vallejo because it's a lot more shiny silver. But I'll just go through, just touch the uh, these little pipes up at the backpack here, which is uh, which is pretty cool. And what else is silver? Oh, the little tubes on his mask. So I'll just grab those. Just in here. All right. Just, this is why I like using the psycho brush because you can just get in there like really easily. All right. So we just got those silver parts there. And I guess a lot of you are thinking, oh, well, Steve, you've missed the gun. Actually, no, I haven't. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and uh, we are going to do the gun black. So we're going to get some Abaddon black for that. And we will need a bigger brush. And the way I do it is I use Abaddon black uh, to go under the gun and then I dry brush over it in silver. So we're going to get some Abaddon black here. A any black will do, guys. I just, I'm just using Abaddon black. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what you're going to be doing as well either okay 
Um, and you can also you, you can also do some of the trim black as well because we're gonna go over it in gold. So it's good to have um, a little bit of black there for the um, for the gold as well. So we'll go through and we'll we'll do that. So yeah, let's get going. Uh, usually I wouldn't use a psycho here. Uh, I would just paint it out with a normal brush, but because I'll have to stop the camera, I'll just keep going. Love this brush so much. So yeah, I'm just going to just go around here, just attack the gun with Abaddon Black, just paint all of it. There we go, just went through, just changed camera angle. Um, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Still, still getting used to the, the camera angles and stuff. For these tutorials guys so i'm gonna have to work uh work that out as i'm going it's just difficult because uh you gotta make sure that it's on the camera but you can't stuff up the model either you know so we just go around the trim like that in black so guys look at it's starting to pop already it's starting to look really cool already Abaddon Black is a really, really good black from Games Workshop. Um, it's one of the paints I do like from them. I just find it has a really good consistency. Turn it off now, I don't need that anymore. come in here and just paint those pauldrons out like that all right guys fantastic so I've just gone through here and I've just laid base colors on the black there as you can see all right so for the gun the bolt gun also the trim um, of the uh, pauldrons there silver on the back of the areas between the armor all right, um, and also don't forget about under the jetpack or the rebreather or whatever it is. Okay, and um, yeah, and oh, I need to put a little bit of lead belcher just here on the top arm, um, which is going to be very, very important as well. So I'm going to do that as well. Um, and then once I've done that, I'm going to go through and do the null oil. Okay, but what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go around the model um, with a little bit of this. Uh, iridescent blue uh, with my brush and just pick out any areas that need a little bit of patching up on the model um, so if there's any areas of black where I've stuffed up or anything like that uh, so you can see I think on that pauldron there was an area where I made a mistake there right near the right there okay so I'm just going to go through just neaten up those areas with the blue wonderful guys all right so that blue is coming out magnificently, if I do say so myself. All right, and uh, now what we're going to do, we're going to go through and we're going to do some null oil uh, in between all the crevices. All right, we're going to be using null oil gloss. Okay, not that you can actually see that that's null oil gloss because I've got crap all over it. All right, and so what I want to do is I just want to go through all the areas that are silver. This is a pretty standard technique, guys. Um, I just want to go through all the areas that are silver, uh, like in between here, in between these armor parts, and just put in some null oil gloss in there. Right? Like that. All right? And I just want to go through, like, on the backpack as well. And then what I want to do, I want to go around these recesses so in these little parts here, like, you know, so just in these little grooves and stuff like that. Right? Like so, just, just go through here. All right? And just, uh, just outline all those indents. Okay. All right. So we'll just go through. We'll do that. We'll get that done. And um, we'll see you in the next section, guys. I'm loving that blue. I'm loving that blue. Epic, guys. Epic guys, all right, now you can see I've put the null oil on and you can see that the uh, marine is really starting to pop now. 
the contrast between the two uh, colors. You can see that iridescent uh, color really standing out now. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to go through. I'm going to dry brush that bolt gun. Okay, with lead belcher. All right, then I'm going to go through. I'm going to start working on the trims. All right, of the pauldrons. That's going to be done in Vallejo gold or maybe old gold. And I'll go over it in gold after. And, um, and then we're going to go through, put some uh, detail into the eyes. Now that's going to be Vallejo silver because it's really nice and bright. All right, fantastic. So there you have it, guys. I think it's looking really, really good. Um, remember the, the light is a little bit darker in here. Um, so I'll take some photos of it later, but you can really start to see that purple shift coming out now. All right. And remember guys, we're going to be doing heaps of other tutorials as well. Uh, this is just the beginning. Uh, and I've got to do the Eagle gold as well. All right. So what I'll do is I'll just show you that technique. We're just going to get some lead belcher. All right. And, uh, just get an old brush. And I still got to find my old brush that was lying around here somewhere, but that's okay. I'll just use this one for now. And we just want to go and just dry brush around here. So just using the brush and, um, and just sort of like just dry brush over that, that gun metal just there like that. All right, so the idea is you just want to wipe like most of the stuff, the uh, the paint off your model, and um, and yeah, just start dry brushing over it, and it starts to look really cool. All right, so there you can see we're starting to get the the gun metal coming into it. All right, fantastic. All right, guys, fantastic. So as we can see here, you can see how I've got the eyes. The eyes have a uh, a silver sheen to them, all right, which is awesome. And you can see the bolt gun now it has lead belcher. And yeah, all right. So we'll go through now, and we're gonna add some contrast trust blood angel red to the eyes. And we're gonna also go through, and we're going to then do some silver. So we're gonna do some. Sorry, not silver. We're going to do some gold trim around here. Okay? Fantastic. Great one, guys. Awesome. So you can see there I've just painted the gun housing black. All right. And I've just gone through and the eyes you can see are red. All right. And that was done with contrast blood angel. All right. Which is really cool. Fantastic. Now my lights are down, guys. I've got no light. That's so why the armor's looking very dark. But once I get some light back on the charge, it should be looking cool. But it's good because it allows you to see it in sort of all different forms. And here we can see, guys, the ultramarine starting to pop. So what we've done here, we've put the gold trim around the pauldrons, around the knees. And uh, I've just noticed we're going to have to go in there and do the eagle as well. I've changed my mind about the gold. Um, I'm using Retributor Armor because it's easier to put on as a base coat. And then I'm going to go, I'll do the highlights in um, Vallejo Liquid Gold. Um, and I'll do some shading with Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss. All right, so I'll finish that section and, uh, and I'll show you the rest. All right, guys, so you can see now, you can see now, guys, it's starting to come together. I've got the, um, I've got the Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss over the uh, Retributor Armor Gold. And then I've highlighted up into some Vallejo Gold, Liquid Gold. And you can just see that armor popping up right there. It's looking really cool. So the next step will be to go through and paint those pockets up the back in probably Rhinox Hide or some kind of darker brown. And then go over them in Steel Legion Drab. And then what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to go through and finish up this purity seal. Okay. Um, just, you know, red on the top, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Like maybe some crimson wash in the middle. Um, and then I might do some very, 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 very slight edge highlighting um, on him as well. 
but uh, we'll see how we go. And there's some other, other stuff we're going to need to do, like the site. We'll just use some spirit stone uh, for the site and things like that. I'm thinking we get some spirit stone in the eyes just to make them pop out just a little bit more. So they're looking, they're looking good. Um, but I think they could pop out just a little more. So yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be good. Um, when he's done, you can see he's reflecting really, really well. And he's, he's a darker blue, but that's kind of like what we were going for with this tutorial. Uh, and there is a little bit of purple in there as well, but probably that's not coming up on the camera right now. All right. Fantastic guys. We'll keep going. Um, yeah. Doing the back pouches and the, um, and the uh, purity seal. All right, brothers, fantastic. So what we're gonna do is um, the back here, we've got these little pouches and this little canister thing. So what we'll do is we'll come in uh, and do the cow the pouches. We'll just do the, I've got this color here. It's German cam, pow pow cam pale brown, excuse me. Um, and we'll just use that for underneath. I usually use Rhinox Hide or even Doom Ball Brown. I think it's Doom Bolt or Doom Ball Brown or whatever. Uh, it's a Games Workshop paint, but uh, I couldn't find it. So I'm just going to lay it down with this. It doesn't really matter, guys. Like, to be honest, um, you know, like what you, what you paint in here. Okay, gee, look at that armor, guys. To my armor's not looking sick. So we're just gonna come through here and um, put that through like that. Yeah, so, so let me know like in the comments down below, guys, what do you think of the tutorial? Let me know how you think I can improve the tutorials. Um, you know, I, I sort of think it's like, well, you know, it's kind of a waste of time recording like every single little step, you know, like it's like, oh, this is how you null oil a model, like, oh, yeah. I know I probably shouldn't assume that we all know how to do it, but it's kind of like, you know, if you want to know how to null oil or wash a model, go to Citadel, you know, go to their Facebook page or something like, you know, the, the, this is a, what I'll do is I'll do like little mini tutorials, um, that show like each step in depth. Like I did, you know, like I've already got, you know, how to undercoat coat a model and everything on there. Um, you know, in the tutorials, so, you know, because otherwise this, you know, it'll be here all day doing this, guys, like, you know, we want to, we want to get these done, so I'm just going to go over these here, and we can see that I've got, um, you know, sometimes, like, I'll do it on camera, sometimes I'll do it off camera, um, you know, areas like this, which are easier to get to, I'll just do it on camera, so you can see what I'm doing, um, but I'm still getting used to the camera guys. So, you know, when are you doing the shoulder pauldrons and things like that? I'll just do those off camera. Um, I, I will get there. We'll go through in another tutorial and, um, and we'll basically, uh, you know, go through step by step the whole thing. Once I'm more comfortable with this camera, this is the second time I've used this camera guys. And the first time I've used this camera doing a tutorial, all right? So I'm still sort of getting used to it and working out what's going on. So there we go. That's the base coat for them. That's done. So I'll just put him down here for a second. Um, and now what we'll do is look, there's also a hundred ways to do the, uh, to do these lights. But what I'll do is not lights. Uh, what do you call them? Um, the scope on his gun. So what I'll do is though, I'll just come in here with a little bit of Vallejo silver and, um, come in here with a little bit of Vallejo silver and I'll just for this tutorial I'll just do it very cheap and nasty um get those guns going in there like that so I'll just wait till it gets into the focus there so fantastic right so you could just come in there and and just just add a little bit of a you know touch there oh it was the wrong one it should be the the top one Ha ha ha, all good. So we'll just go up the top here. That's for the scope, right? So scope up there. That bit can be like a little laser pointer. So we'll make that red, that's fine. Um, I'm not gonna drill the barrel. You can do that guys. I've just got a little bit of black there. Uh, I'm not gonna drill the bar barrel in this tutorial. I could do a tutorial um, on it, on how to drill the barrels and things like that. Um, so this will go basically on the back of the gun. So this 
this area of the site here. Right, so just a little bit of a little bit of uh, Vallejo Silva on the back there, uh, which should be cool. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with him so far. I think he's looking really cool. I think he's definitely you see his eyes there. He's kind of peering out. Like I said, we'll get some spirit so, sto, stone spirit red or whatever it's called in there in a second, and uh, and we'll go through do that. All right, fantastic. So fantastic, guys! I just got some spirit stone green here. All right, it's a it's an old uh, gemstone paint from Games Workshop. They don't do it anymore, but uh, that's cool, guys. Just use if you don't have it, just use any like contrast paint and just stick it on there. And you can just like gloss over it later if you want. And that'll that'll basically give you the little sort of uh, gun sight. I don't know if you can see it there, but it is there. I might need some more of it actually. So let me just get it in there. There we go. I can see that a lot better now. There's a little bit of green sight there. There are other ways of doing this, um, painting it on manually, which I'll do another tutorial for that another time. There we go. So now he's got his sight on the back and the front lit up. Magic. All right. Um, and now I think what we'll do is we'll just go over and we'll just do a highlight on the, uh, on the back shoulder uh, packs. Not shoulder packs, the, the back pockets there near the belt. Right, so we'll just go do that. Um, I'll just go over it with some Steel Legion drab. Like, you know, this should be cool. We'll just go through just a bit of a dry brush, you know, guys. A bit of a dry brush on there. Should be cool. On the back there. So we'll just go through, just dry brush that on. Can edge highlight it as well if you want. Um, I don't think I'll do it for this miniature, but you can definitely do it. So let's get it back there like that. Cool, the pouches are done. Looking pretty sweet. And if you feel if you feel that they're not, you know, they're, they're looking a little bit too stark, you can always just get a little bit of. Uh, Seraphin sepia and uh, and then just you know put it just in the very fine recesses just there so if I go in and just basically come in there and just put some like just in the middle there that'll just help to darken it up a little bit just shade over it you know we don't want to go too crazy on those you can use some melt oil if you want as well um, well, like I said, guys, we don't want to go like too nuts with it there. All good. Um, fantastic. All right. Yeah. So that that's that's nice. Sort of darkens it up a bit. We use we can use some nut oil as well, just to go through there, um, and just darken it up, just like right near the pouch. So let's have a look here. Just underneath, just to add some details. Yeah, that's cool. There we go. Yeah, that's that's way better. Just darkened it up. Darkened it up a fair bit. All right, fantastic. So that's that section done. Now we'll move on to the um the purity seals. My brother's fantastic. So let's get to work on this purity seal. Um so we have the marine here and I want to start working on that purity seal right here. So I'm going to start off with some of Mephiston Red. Now guys, this isn't going to be the crazy land, you know, how to do, you know, the crazy version of purity seals. This is just your very basic, this tutorial is an introductory tutorial for the channel. Um, like I will do more in depth sections. Um, on all this so but just for now we're just gonna keep it like pretty pretty basic I'll try to move all this stuff up forward so the camera can keep focus it's um, really annoying it's really hard to paint if it keeps going out of focus so um all right fantastic so 
Just gonna grab grab some um, Mephiston red here. Just paint that in. Once again, my finger in the way. Looks like this Mephiston red is stuffed up. That's what happens when you get Games Workshop paints, people. It's exactly what happens. Why am I not surprised? That's all right. I'll just stick it in there. We'll get, we'll get another color. We'll just go straight to uh, Evil Sun Scarlet then. So brand new Evil Sun Scarlet just in the middle here. Just plop that in. Alright, cool. Should do it alright. Now, <clears throat> waiting for that to dry, we'll go through and we'll get some. <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna use a little bit of white scar. But first of all, we'll start off like with some shanty bone. This could be any bone color, guys. Doesn't really matter. Okay, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Um, like what bone color it is that you want to do. All right, so we're just gonna go paint on some shanty bone in here. Okay. Like I said, this is the this is the quick and mean version of uh of the purity seals all right fantastic so just get some of that on there like that <clears throat> maybe we might have to put on a few layers All right, cool. Yeah, so I think that'll work out okay once I once I put the um once I put the purple tone on there. Usually I'll use the crimson one, the crimson wash, but you know whatever. While we're waiting that f to die down a little bit to dry, I'll just go through and I'll just get some null oil quickly and. Stick it around, just around the purity seal. It's very, just very carefully. Need to be very careful here. I might just get the hair dry on that a little bit, guys. <clears throat> Just with another layer of the uh, shanty bone. Yeah, that red will be fine. All right, fantastic. And just fill it out a bit there. It doesn't matter if it goes over a bit because we're going to have to do a pass. I hate doing purity seals. They're so annoying. Um. I'm a bit over them too. Like I reckon, like I just, I just don't like the looks of, like on, on, of them anymore on Primaris or anything. So. All 
and just come on under underneath the model. Just upside down. Cool. All right, so that'll do. Let that dry for a little bit. Sweet as. Um, now we could get in some, well, we should let that dry for a bit, but I think it'll be okay. Let's get some purple tone on there. So I just got to put some purple tone down in the purity seal. So it should be fine. I'll have to go over that gold area again, but that's okay. Yeah, so that looks all right. Just to add a little bit of purple shift in there. Yeah, just around in there like that. Pretty cool. All right. So while that's drawing, I'll just neaten up the armor a little bit, uh, the gold trim, because I've got a little bit of red on that. I should have been a little bit more careful, but I'm just getting tired now because I want to be painting my miniatures. <laughs> So, because I'm not using this guy in an army, I just thought it would be a cool tutorial. So I go through and just put that in there. Paint that in there. Fantastic. All right. Now, a bit of a hairdryer again, just speed things up a bit. Fantastic. Um, now what I will need to do is we're going to put some uh, seraphim sepia on the purity seal on the actual parchment part. In there like that all right trying to get it sort of in that little part there all right in between the grooves all right fantastic I'll just have to go get a little bit more of this blue because I just noticed that I put a little bit too much gold there so just get that one out there like that Yep, it's just cracked up a little bit, that blue. That's a good thing about the blue. Um, it's really, it's, it's really nice shade of blue, really nice consistency. So you could just go through and, um, and fix stuff up. Not a problem. All right, cool. That's looking okay. That's looking okay. Um, while that's drying, that's looking fine up back there. I think, do I have my red technical paint here I just want to do what I want to do is I just I'm thinking I'm thinking that the eyes could use a little bit of glow around the outside so I just want to go in and just add like a little bit of glow just around the outside here with some blood letter just like right around the outside here try to get the camera down for you it's just it's really tough to paint and like at the same time guys because like I always change position like whenever I paint so like it's really tough like you know to I'll just get my hand around there a little bit and this will just add like a little bit of glow
little bit of a glow effect around the eyes. Yeah, so that's that's working okay. Yeah, just a bit of extra, extra glow in there. You know, you can see how the white is sort of falling in, nice and cool. All right, fantastic. So at that point, the purity seal should be ready now. So I'll just get the Evil Sun Scarlet. And I don't want to wreck my Psycho brush, so I'll just get the, the dry brush here and just do some just quick dry brushing just around the very edge of the purity seal and a little bit more Cool. All right. That'll do it. Starting to look good. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is, well, I need to do a little bit of border around it, but I'm going to put the inscriptions on the parchment first. Now, what I use to do this is I use this thing here. This is what we call a micro pen. So I actually cheat. It's a 0.01 micro pen okay and i use this and it's just so you can see it's a very very fine tip right and i literally just go through and i just write on it <laughs> so i just go here it's got to be dry though hopefully it's dry enough i think it should be once again you know my hand what if i move the camera in a little bit here Maybe like this. Maybe this would be better. I don't know. Something like this. Yeah, it works a little bit better. So we go through here and then just write on it. See? There's an awesome tip for you if you're still if you're still watching. Have a go at that. Right, it's the brother Stevanius way, guys. So what I also like to do is just use usually I use uh, corn red, but I just use a bit of Mephiston. I just like to add a little bit of a a dab here. So just on the parchment, um, like title headings. Very tiny. Just like little red dots. It kind of adds like, you know, like in the Bible or whatever, where like, you know, the start of the sentence pops up and it's like in red or something. So hopefully you can see that on the camera. Light's really bad in here, guys. My battery of my light ran out uh, as well. So it's, yeah, what can we do? All good. I'll, um, I'll have to organize something for the next tutorial. It's going to take, it's going to take a few times, guys, for me to, you know, to completely get into the expert swing of the of doing this, um, filming it, you know, working out the position of the camera and everything. Again, Games Workshop Paint, 
Thanks Games Workshop. Loving it. Bloody heck, man. That's what you get. That's what you get. That's Scar White, too. It's, uh, yeah. So, luckily for this, it's not really going to matter too much. Because I'm just going to go through and just highlight over it. So, just on the edge, just... Just what I'm doing, I'm just using the edge of the brush just to just dry brush sort of the edge, just the very edge of it, the very tip. Alright. You don't want to go too crazy because... Should be very subtle. Alright, yeah, that'll do. Cool. Alright, that's that annoying part done. It's bloody annoying to do those, I tell you. Oh, alright. Fantastic, brothers. So let's keep going now. Let's see what we're what we're up to. Uh, so we've done that. We've fixed the eyes up a little bit, added the glow. Uh, we've done all that, done the gold, done all that. Probably just dry brush around those joints a bit more. Uh, pop them out a bit more. We could probably just add a little bit more highlight to that pouch. What do we got? What do we got? What can we do? Okay, we're going to use this Ashanti bone. I'm just going to do like some Ashanti bone up here. All right. So I can just, and notice how I'm using my fingernails, a little palette. Just using the edge of my brush, right? Just to feather on a little bit of a shanty bone on the very edges. You notice how I turn my model as I'm working. That's why it's tough for me to, to do tutorials because I, I turn my model a lot. I move my model a lot. So... Yeah, so that'll do it. We just want a bit of a highlight there. We don't want it too stark. You know? Let me just dry brush up a little bit here. There we go, that'll do. All right, fantastic. So yeah, we're nearly done, guys. I think what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna go through and we will need to do a little bit of edge highlighting on him. Nothing too crazy, just on the extreme highlights. And yeah, I'd be inclined, maybe a little bit of weathering. I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna put any like chipping on this guy, guys. We'll do that on another tutorial. Um, but I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, we'll definitely do some edge highlighting. So the way I want to do this, I'm gonna come in here with some lead belcher. All right. I'm not gonna edge highlight the whole model, guys. So it's gonna take ages. Uh, but we'll come in here with some lead, bel lead belcher. And again, uh, for this, it's a bit interesting because usually we'd use a color with, with a lighter tone, but it's going to be, what I'm going to have to do for this, because we don't want to use just complete lead belcher. So what I'm going to need to do for this, I'm going to need to go and I'm going to need to um, probably wash over it with a clear paint or something. And you can see here how just using the, the very edge of my brush, just to get like the finest, finest highlight. All right, just like you gotta wipe, the way you do it is you wipe a little bit off your brush and you just sort of like go over the model almost as if like you're not even touching the model. 
right? That's the secret, all right? I think that's looking pretty cool now. If you look down at the feet, right, you can see we're getting that just a little edge popping up just there. So we'll continue with that just on the very highlights. Yeah, so sometimes you'll have to draw it on, but most of the time, you know, you could just use the natural, the natural curves of the model to get a bit of highlights going. I'll I'll do a I'll see notice how I turn the model around here. Right? And then I come in and then I use the tip edge of the brush and just feather it on. Might take a while guys, but it takes longer to fix it. Right, so you just want to just get that edge on the uttermost edges there. Adds it adds heaps. Um we'll go maybe on these side sort of guards. Notice how I'm turning the model around once again. I think Yip was asking me about this. So we'll do it, we'll do a better one, Yip. Um, a more detailed edge highlighting tutorial, but for now, this will do. Now on here, I'm probably just going to come on here and just move this down so slightly. Just on here. I want a little bit of thickness to that highlight. You'll see, you'll see why soon. Stuffed up a bit there, that's all right. So that'll do for now. Just a little bit of highlighting, guys. We're not going to go crazy here with this model. There'll be another another tutorial for this. We just want to do a little bit here and there just so it stands out. Right, maybe over on the... On the hands as well. Just on the very tips. There we go. You can see it makes a massive difference. Maybe just up on here. Just the very wet raised one, guys. Um, what I'll try, I'll try a different angle. That works out a bit better. Alright, we're just going to get a little bit more lead belcher here and just come from the again notice how I'm turning the model I 
I just tap it in. Maybe here as well. Ever so slightly. Now guys, you've seen some of my other some of my other models. Um, you know, I, I'll go crazy and basically edge highlight like every single little thing. Um, but for this model, like it's just to give the idea, you know. I've got a whole Alpha Legion army to paint. You see here how I'm running my edge. This is a very important edge. Don't worry if you stuff it up, guys. You can neaten it up later. Just get that edge going a little bit there. The edge going a little bit there. Just the very tip, just feathering it on. All right, cool. Um, and then we just probably want a tiny little bit just on his face guard here. Just dry brush it, like micro dry brush that stuff on. Yeah, okay, that's looking sick. Yeah. All right. Also, I mean, like I said, guys, I usually do the whole thing, but another area that, um, that we could do is just up the top here. It's pretty important. So, just up near the eyes here. It's just very important, guys. Like, never, never be afraid of it, you know? Like, if you stuff it up, you stuff it up. You know, who cares? You can always fix it up later. With edge highlighting, um, you know, you've got to do corrections anyway. Like 99% of the time, guys, you've got to, you've got to do corrections. Um, so usually I'd go like all around there on the top there. Um, I, but I think this is oh, around the, around the backpack, you know. So we might just go just around here these tips here these tips here uh, that'll do for this one um, oh and and these parts yep just the very edge guys see All right, fantastic. All right, he's, he's starting to look really good now. So there you go, you can see him. 
is looking very dark, very menacing. Um, I'm thinking, I'm liking the edge highlights because they're subtle. I don't want, didn't want super extreme edge highlights on this model. Um, but what we can do to correct that, to correct the edge highlights, um, I'm going to use some calf blue. All right, um, just to go through and just sort of go around the edge of the edge highlights, if that makes sense. Which is just going to help to... Make them look a little bit more subtle. But also blend them into the rest of the blue. So just in the areas that I, like I went a bit too far. It's kind of like masking Or some shit. Guys, by this time, I got no idea what I'm saying. I'm freaking exhausted. Like, <laughs> this is, um, yeah, this tutorial has been really, really rough. Um, it's not finished yet. We still got to put the decals. And, um, and do the base. So yeah, that's good. Oh, and around this top part. Yeah. So I just want to chase, like trace over this edge part from the top down. Just to help fill that. You can see it's looking really good now. Probably this might need just a little bit of a pushback. Yeah. See what the calf blue does? It keeps the edge highlight there, but it just it just subtles it up a little bit. I mean you could use anything. You don't even need to put the calf blue on. You can have it there. If you want it there, you could have it there. Um eyes here I went a bit too far up it's also very smooth and very consistent so it allows you to do corrections very easy there we go Awesome. All right, cool. He's looking all right. I'm thinking, yeah, we might, we might put the decals on. I think I think that's enough. We could guys we could push it further. Um like you know you could sit here, you know, do like a gazillion million gazillion billion things with this model. Um but I think that's enough for now. Yeah. So all the other stuff there's there's going to be many many tutorials guys, many more tutorials. We can't learn everything all in the one sitting. Um, I'll be more organized next time in the next one. Looks like I finally found my camera angle, which is this, which is really cool. So I wish I would have known that before, um, but yeah, cool. All right, let's move on to some decals. So what I'm gonna do for decals, 
we're going to be using decal medium from Vallejo. You can use decal set from Army Painter. Um, you do not have to use anything if you don't want to. Um, I'm going to put some decals on this guy. So what I'm going to do, um, simplest way, guys, I was just going to get this thing. I'm going to stick some water on the top. So the water's a bit dirty, but whatever, we'll live. Better if you use clean water. Hopefully I've got this decal sheet in here from the box that these Marines came out of. Yeah, it's here. And guys, like I said, I'll, I'll do a, I'll do it. This is just like a rough cut sort of thing. I'll do like a full tutorial on how I do, um, how I do all this stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. So guys, let's add a few decals. We'll add some Ultramarines things to his things, to his shoulders, and we'll add like this skull to his knee, and we'll call it a day for the Marine. Um, fantastic. So he's not a sergeant, right? So just gonna use the scissors here, right, to cut him out. He's not a sergeant or a lieutenant. He's just a marine. So he's just gonna get these. Actually, I put the arrow. He's a. He'll be from fourth company. Plus, we're gonna need decals um, for the other tutorials as well which is going to be really important. So let's get that there. Just get that off there. Cut that like that. Cool. Yep, sweet. And then we just want this sort of skull to be around the around his knee. Add a little bit of detail to him. Fantastic, guys. Yeah, I think it's, it's been a pretty good tutorial, you know. Um, first one, really. Um, I think it definitely could be improved 100%. Um, I haven't done my best work, you know, but that's because I've been operating the camera as well and sort of learning this sort of tutorial making process. Um, so what you want to do with the decals, you just want to make sure you cut them down uh, to as close as you can to the shape as possible, right? And then what you do is to stop the decals from like um, flapping up what I do, this is extremely important, guys. I just put a snip through the middle about halfway, right? So that way they're gonna stick to the they're gonna stick to the the model a lot better, right? Ah, there's a helicopter from the hospital. There's a, I live near a near one of the best hospitals in Australia, which is cool. But like now and then there's a helicopter or so flies over. Um, better than the better than the bloody sweat when I used to live in the CBD, holy crap. So again, I'm just gonna put that cut just in there, but just be careful with this one because you know we don't want to cut that one too much, right? Alright, it's very easy. I'm just gonna get my ultramarine symbol, stick it up here into the water. Right, on my little ghetto water thing. Right. I do things heaps ghetto, guys. And I'm just going to put them all at once, stuff it. Oh, this this skull, this is definitely going to need a cut because this comes out like a little bit weird. So we're definitely going to need to stick that on. Yeah, so you want to put the cut in the middle so that the transfer could fold around the round parts of the model. Give it a few seconds, all good. Um, and then this is, you know, this is nearly the model done. And like I said, guys, we we could definitely push it further. We could 100% push it further, um, much, much further. And we will in other tutorials, but I just wanted to give you guys a taste as well of what it's like. Because the thing is, that it took me the whole tutorial, guys, to work out the freaking camera angle I should be using. So... <laughs> 
You know, like, I'm not going to blow all the, you know, imagine doing this epic tutorial with everything in there and the, so you can't see any, anything. All right, so I think this is going to be, this is going to be cool. I mean, it's all right. I like it. I like the scheme. Um, you know, it's a little bit on the darker side, but, you know, whatever, guys, it's something different. This is what I wanted to do with this tutorial, something, something different. Um... And remember, he looks actually lighter than, way lighter than what the camera's picking up. Um, it's just because I've got no lights going on. I've got one on my head I'm using this thing, but as you can see, it's it's tiny. So, all right. So once I've done that, I'm going to get the brush. And I'm just going to come in with a brush, any brush. I usually use the airbrush cleaning brush, but I can't see it anywhere. I could be stuffed at this point. And I'm just going to go through, grab my decal. All right, sit it down here. At this time, it should be wet enough. All right, yes, it is. All right, and I'm just going to get it. I'm just going to push it off like that. Push it off. Flick it off with your brush like that. Easy. Use the other end of the brush. Move it around. Right, and it goes on beautifully. Right, and you can see that little cut we made in the decal, how it's helping. All right, fantastic. All right, now what we want to do, I'm going to use some of this decal medium. Put a little bit of that down. And this is going to soften the decal and help it to set. All right. Doesn't matter if it slides around a bit, it'll fix up when it dries. There we go. Fantastic, guys. All right. Spin the model around. The other one should be ready now. The arrow should be ready. Does it go up or down, guys? I can't remember. Oh, I'm hopeless. Oh, I should be turned into a servitor for that. Get it, just stick it over here like that. Oh, look, guys, I'll, I'll do a whole other tutorial on specifically on decals. Well, this is just to give you sort of a bit of an idea. Pushing that one forward. All right, and then just splash on some decal medium so yeah what this decal medium does it basically goes through and it just softens the decal um so it you know applies to the model a little bit better now i'm probably not going to varnish this model oh i might actually i might give it a varnish yeah see what happens or maybe I just like I, I like to varnish most of the time because what it does is it helps me to basically go through and protect the decals I think we will give it a varnish I think he's yeah I'm liking the color but I think he, he could look a little bit more sort of metallic I'm just gonna push that just make sure that arrow is straight it's all right Something like that. And now we'll do the one on the on the knee. It's always a tricky one. Go on this knee, will be a bit easier. Yeah. Sorry about that jump cut, guys. I just had to cough my bloody lungs up. Flick that away. And you can see here how the cut 
is really helping us to wrap that decal around the knee. Um, and what will help a lot more is decal medium. Just softens it up so it wraps around better. It'll take a while to dry, but whatever. Now, just having a look here, I'm not really too happy with this, this arrow because that purity seal's there. It's getting in the way of the natural sort of placement of the arrow. And it'll be right there. A little bit more decal medium. All right, cool. So that's going on there like that. It's looking good. Yeah, he's looking. He's looking good. All right. He's looking pretty good. Interesting blue too. All right, fantastic. I'm just trying to clean up this arrow. It's yeah, it's it's not in a good position because of the the purity seal. All right, fantastic, cool. So it's good. Um, all right, so I guess now we move on to the base. Yeah, so with the base, what I do is I just get some uh, Steel Legion drab in my airbrush and uh, give it a bit of a spray. It's nice and fast. Hopefully this is, I might have to water this one down a little bit. It's probably the wrong pot. Ah, that's all right. Right, you know what? New plan. Screw the airbrush. It's how I usually do it, but let's just paint it on. It's just, it's just one buddy. Need a bigger brush for this. It's just one, one, one counter, one one base, it's, it's not, you know, we're going to be putting stuff on the top of it anyway, we're not even going to be seeing it. Hopefully on camera, Steve. So I'll just go through, just paint this out, it doesn't matter. So guys, usually I use an airbrush, check out my basic tutorial on the channel if you want to see, you know, the proper way I do bases. Uh, this tutorial is kind of just like a bit of a bit of a, you know, I don't know, it's sort of like a basics of everything kind of thing. You notice here how I'm using the scissors to prop it up. Usually I have this little sort of pizza base thing uh, for my airbrush booth that I spin things around on. But whatever. Alright, so that's there. That's going to have to dry. Give it. So it's Tamiya Diorama Texture Effects, right? It's kind of like, kind of like the more chunky version of the technical paints from Games Workshop. And I'm going to go through and I'm just going to get this paint, this uh, crap, and I'm just going to blob it down like that. This is actually the way I base my Alpha Legion 2. All right, now this could take a little while to dry as well. Just so you know. 
Alright, you just sort of like paste it on. Yeah, like that, and just move it around. So yeah, it's very much like the Games Workshop texture paints, except you can actually build volume with it. You can actually build form. You know, so if I wanted to like just stack this up, I could. Usually I put some putty or clay down the bottom. Um, but like I said, guys, I'm, I'm keeping this tutorial uh, pretty simple because I want to get it up there. You know, I want to get it up there. And we can we can do more in-depth ones later. This is the first of many tutorials. So I'm just like going to just slam that down there like that. All right. Very nice. Very fantastic. All right. Let's push this around a little bit. Make sure you have your water ready. All right, cool. Lid, lid back on that. All right, then I'm gonna go through, get some modeling slate. All right, it's basically just rocks. Find one that's appropriate size. And I'm just gonna like plop it on like that. And uh, just to be sure, just to be careful, I'll use some uh, PVA glue. It was here. Yeah, because I was doing a project before. It's all right, super glue. Got to learn to improvise, guys. Bit of super glue. Bit of super glue down in here just to help it stick. Sweet. It should help stick it on. And uh, let's give him a flower because he's a nice Marine. Stick that flower there. Wonderful. And uh, we'll need to wait for this to dry. It will take this base a while to dry. Uh, this putty does take a little while to dry, unfortunately. Um, but that's okay, because it's really fast. I'll have to trace back over that. That's all right. Yeah, and there we go. It sets his base, so he's gonna he's gonna sit on it. I'll cut that stuff off. And super glue him on there. What I'll do, um, I'm going to snip him off right now, actually. So I'll just go through, use my snips here. Snip that guy off. Snip that guy off. And just get it off. I'll probably have to sand that down. Ah, probably not. All right, fantastic. And I could just stick him on the top there like that. So this will be a job for super glue for sure. The bottom of the feet. Careful with super glue, guys. Don't get any on you. And uh, don't put on too much because if it will stuff the model. And I'll just stick that on there like that. Brothers, fantastic. We're nearly there. Thank goodness. Um, he's looking pretty sweet. We're just going to finish him off with a little bit of Vallejo pigment. Uh, burnt ember or something like that. I don't know. Something brown, guys. Just whack it on. Um, usually for my Alpha Legion, I use uh, sort of like the red orc hair one. But to contrast with the dark blue of the Ultramarine, I'm going to use some brown. I don't want to use some red. So I'm just going to go through just powder that on very very gently just around the rock all right and just kind of like rub that on then just brush it over the feet all right we don't want to go overboard of this just be careful you don't want to go overboard all right a lot of people they go overboard with this part, and then they just stuff their model up. 
you just want to weather it up a little bit, like down near the feet, maybe a little bit down here. All right, near the greaves and stuff. All right, and a bit on the rock there. All right, let's turn this guy around. All right, lovely blue that, lovely blue. And just go through and just put some down there, bit of, bit of mud, maybe a little bit down here. He's still drying on the base too, so. All right, and I reckon that's it. Leave it there. All right, guys, he's just getting dried to the to the base to the rock. Um. Definitely not my best work, but this is my process, and we've learnt, you know, all about a pretty wicked colour blue there. All right, iridescent electric blue by Auto Air Colours. And if you sat through this whole tutorial, I'd just like to thank you for watching, and thank you for being subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we'll be doing more of these, and they get better as I get better at the filming process and everything. Um, and it should be epic guys. 